screen, number 33, at the bottom of your screen. The man at the top of your screen was number 45, Kadri Ismail. And if the name is familiar, yes, it is his brother, who returned the two kicks last week for Notre Dame against the University of Michigan. Of course, the older brother is known as Rocket. He is known as Missile. Averaging 33 yards per return. There's a good look at it. Very young, a very raw talent, and the coaches get extremely excited when they talk about number 45. Hand is in the air by Van Horn, and we are about to decide a very big one in Eastern football. We're underway. Ismail at the four. Runs into a herd of players, crosses the 25 out to the 30 yard line, and here are the road handlers starting lineups for tonight's ball game. It will be Bill Shar at quarterback. Behind him, he will have Michael Owens and Dwayne Kennan. Rob Moore and Rob Carpenter are the wide receivers. Andrew Dees is the tight end. John Flannery, the very fine center. This is a great offensive line. Gary McCummings at left guard. Blake Bettnars on the right side. Mike Bernard at left tackle. And Turnell Sims is at right tackle. We'll check that Pittsburgh defense after this opening play. Sharp fumbles the snap. They run a reverse. That's Carpenter. He wants to throw. Has a man wide open. Rob Moore, and he will score. Sixty-nine yards on the opening play, and Kevin, the snap from center, was fumbled. That may have helped the play. I think anything that distracts a defense is going to cost you. And this play is it's just a great call. The execution, not all that hot. You can see the Pittsburgh defense, heavy pursuit. Carpenter, a wide receiver to another wide receiver, and a great one. But this wasn't a matter of him getting loose. He was loose. Big play for Syracuse, obviously, on the first play of the game. John Biscop to attempt the extra point. Five of six on the year, and will Elaborate on that story as the ball game goes on. Off to the right and no good. So a missed extra point after the Orangemen come up with a 69 yard touchdown play to open the ball game. There is the man who caught it, the great one, Rob Moore. And it was Rob Carpenter who threw it. He is a transfer from Notre Dame, set out last year. Yes, he is. And I think from a defensive standpoint, that play will not really discourage you that much. It's a trick play on the first play of the game. What it does is put a lot of pressure on the young quarterback, Alex Van Pelt. He hasn't been on the field yet, and he's down six to nothing. A look at some of the Pittsburgh defensive players on the sideline, Ricardo McDonald. And one of those defensive guys who was out there for one play and saw his ball club give up the long distance touchdown and now we will see the Orangeman kick it back to Pitt and in fact not having a chance as Mike Gottfried paces the sideline didn't even have a chance to give you that starting defensive lineup for the Panthers we'll do it on the next series. Now the top teams the last three years in the nation. We all know that Miami has been so very good, but maybe you haven't followed Eastern football as closely as, as some. But look at that, 23-2 and 1. Very quietly have become a very strong and a great program under that man, Coach McPherson. He's done a brilliant job. And that was a brilliant call, a call from a man who's been in football for many years, who knew how aggressive Pittsburgh's defense was, and he turned it against them right away. So Coach Mack goes into his bag of tricks. We laughed the last couple of weeks about Bobby Bowden having either a Ruski or something to come up with at any time of the ball game. At this time, it is a gentleman that, for the most part, you think of far more conservative. He is a conservative coach, certainly offensively. Best up with the kickoff. This is going to come down to Israel at the 14. Out of a 38, 39-yard line, 24 yards on the return. Ismail on the return on the tackle. Alex Van Pelt will open at quarterback. Behind him is his running backs, Kerbin Richards and Ronald Redmond. The wide receivers, Tootin and Truitt. 
the tight end Lyle Sykes, a big junior college transfer. Sestilli will open at center tonight. He will be flanked by Chris Getz on the left. Dean Caliguire normally is the center. He moves to right guard. Matus is the left tackle, and Laborio, Mike Laborio, the right tackle. Back to throw, wide open is Tutton, and he will score. I'm sorry, we gave you the wrong opening tonight. We didn't say track and field, and we should have. Tit for tat as Alex Van Pelt throws to Tootin on a great fake, Kevin. Absolutely. It's in-your-face football. Ryan Greenfield holding. Frazier tries to put his ball club up by one. Low pass from center. They will try to throw. It is intercepted by Syracuse and down at the four-yard line. The extra so let's take a break and catch our breath. We haven't played but 32 seconds of football, and we are tied at six. Syracuse and Pittsburgh, who is the beast of the East? SPN's College Football Saturday, Syracuse versus Pittsburgh, is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. And by Mitsubishi Big Screen Televisions. This game would look better on a Mitsubishi Big Screen. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley back in Pittsburgh, and let's check out that last play. Watch, watch number 25, Rob Thompson, free safety, and watch Van Pelt's right hip. That's where the ball is. Now Thompson, even at this point, thinks it's a run. He takes a false step. And look at this throw by the young quarterback right over the shoulder of Tootin. There's no safety on the inside. He's wide open. It was the great fake assist of Paul Hackett and the first touchdown against the starting secondary of Syracuse in 12 and a half games, 50 quarters. That's incredible. And that was a mark that that man was extremely pleased with. You know, Kevin, for this to have happened in the first 32 seconds, it is kind of like a heavyweight bout with both fighters knocking the other down in the first half minute, isn't it? Yeah, bloody their nose. Remember I said about noses? We've got a couple of bent noses already here. Ismail, number 45. And the kick is going to come to the near side, to David Walker as they keep it away from him. It is Ismail. Hit, bounces off a tackler and is caught from behind as he goes across the 33-yard line. And let's take a look at the pit defense. Spindler and Siragusa are the defensive tackles. The defensive ends as they run for the 4-3, Keith Hamilton and Carney Smith. The middle linebacker, Craig Gobb, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Curtis Bray and Ricardo McDonald. Alonzo Hampton and Robert Bradley, along with Dan Crossman and Lewis Reddick as the safety. Outside. Yes, the receiving team re kicked with a five yard penalty. Well, you don't see that very much to come across the 45 yard line, but that is what the flag was for, so they will kick it over again. That time, Pittsburgh tried to kick it to the right, and, and the Orangemen had, uh, had changed their plan and flipped him over to the other side. I think one of the things that needs to be said is that Pittsburgh's offensive coordinator is now Paul Hackett, a fellow who's had tremendous experience, great experience at USC there for four years. The Browns, where he brought Paul McDonald from USC with him, the 49ers. He's learned under some great coaches, Bill Walsh there, and then the Cowboys for the last two years. He brings all that pro experience here to Pittsburgh, and I think you saw it. He's been literally tied to the young quarterback, has taught him a great many things, among them faking. And you saw that. You'll see a lot of short passing. I really believe even though they have a young quarterback, Pitt will throw the ball a tremendous amount in this first half. Pat O'Neill will do it again as he tees it at the 40 this time. Again, Ismail is lined up to the near side. And David Walker will be to the top of your screen. Jeff Van Horn to kick it off. 
down on one knee, and the Orangemen will scrimmage from their own 20-yard line. Sixty-seven, almost sixty-eight percent for three hundred forty-five yards for Bill Shar. Very accurate passer, but not an option quarterback, and they do run the freeze option at Syracuse. Flag down on the play, and the preliminary signal is personal foul against the Orangemen. As this one got off to a roaring start the first 32 seconds, and now back-to-back -back flags. Hey, hey! Watch the goddamn taunting! Hey, they give him shit! That ball, unsportsmanlike, against the receiver. It will be first down and 20. Syracuse with scrimmage from their own 10 yard line. Two penalties now against the Orangemen for 15 yards. Kenan, the fullback, goes for absolutely nothing, possibly a loss of a half yard on the play. Curtis Bray, outside linebacker on the left, Monroeville, Pennsylvania, is there to make the stop. Number 93 may be the finest defensive tackle in the country. Look at the penetration and the strength pushing the whole play back. Bray made the tackle, but you can see Spindler just pushing the Syracuse people back. Tremendous. You'll see a lot of this kid today. He's one of the best in the country. to Owens, turns it upfield, out to the 13-yard line, Lewis Reddick, junior out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania, is there to make the stop. A strong safety last year, and they have moved him over to the free safety position for this season. Third down, and for Syracuse, they need the 30. Six defensive backs for the Panthers. Shar over the middle, incomplete, looking for his tight end, Andrew Dees. And it will be fourth down and kicking time for Syracuse as Marcus Washington was the man there defensively. Washington is the nickelback, but the key to that entire series was the penalty and the first down play of Spindler. Syracuse is not a team that wants to be in a passing situation. Kenny Hawkins, his longest this year, 48, a good average, almost 44. And a single return man, Alonzo Hampton, is the All-American candidate at left corner for Pitt. Of it. They got a piece of it, and it is out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Mark Spindler, there you see him coming off the field, got a hand on it, and Pitt with great field position. A lot of guys getting loose here. Watch the middle of your screen. Look for number 93. High snap. They're going to have to control this kid. He's loose up the middle again. Just almost knocked it back in his face. Van Pelt, quick out pass, looking for his fullback, Redmond. Just a bit overthrown. Spindler appeared to have almost overrun the ball just a bit. You're right, a, a, a half step back, and he might have blocked it back into the end zone. Six to six, that is right. Two scores in the first 32 seconds of this ball game. Redmond, the fullback, off the left side, counts it inside the 25, and he's down to the 24. Tim Sanquist Ron comes Redmond, up from the his carrier. strong safety position. Tackle made by Rob Thompson. 
Great blocking to the left side, kept by Matus and also gets. That is the strength, Ron, of the, the offensive line. They do have a little bit of a problem on the right side. That's why they move Caligaier out there. Now Syracuse reads into the backfield. They'll key on backs, and that time they use the tailback as a little bit of a misdirection. Misdirection is the key for Pittsburgh in the running game tonight. Swing pass comes to Richards. Turns it upfield and will not have the first down at the 22-yard line as Terry Wooden. And you'll hear his name often tonight, number 90. The All-American out of Hartford, Connecticut, corrals him. Field goal attempt, and Ed Frazier, who is three of three on the year, will come in to attempt this one. It will be from in the vicinity of 39 yards. And a fact from where he's spotting it, it's going to be 40. Doug Hetzler is the holder at the 30. Line drive kick, and we have broken the tie. 39 yards by that man, Ed Frazier. And the Pitt Panthers go on top at the 11.07 mark of this opening period, 9-6 over Syracuse. So let's take a break. 9-6, Pittsburgh on top. We'll be right back. Well, for all the world, when we came into the stadium tonight, I think we looked for a more conservative and <laughs> lower point output ball game, but already 15 points up there with the Panthers now on top, 9-6. Let me just make a point here. The play that Syracuse scored on was trickery. That's respect for the defensive line and the defense, and the same was true of Pittsburgh. It was a first down pass with a great fake. So really the respect, I think, for both defenses holds up. And then I think you can see Pittsburgh against Syracuse in the first series, they stuffed them. This will be a defensive game. You gotta settle down a little bit. The beasts will take over. Here's Ismail. And to his left, number 33, David Walker. So Jeff Van Horn following a personal foul. It was a post-play foul. So tacked on on the kickoff at the 20-yard line, and Syracuse stands to pick up some very good field position. Ismail at the 17. Oh, does he get cracked at the 45, and he brings it out to the 46. It's 29 yards on the return, and Holtzman, or Holtzworth, rather, is there to make the stop. Here comes some scores from around the country other action in the NCAA. let's go to Bob Carpenter he's got some scores for us Bob hey Ron we've also got a highlight for you down in Tallahassee Tulane playing against Florida State and Peter Tom Willis up over the top left side of the end zone Lawrence Dossie with a 30 yard catch three plays 73 yards and Florida State leads it 10 nothing run well Dossie has really been on fire this year Guard, swings it out of the backfield. That's Owens. Runs into some hot pursuit, and he's going to be knocked down for a two-yard loss. Ricardo McDonald, number 48, the sophomore out of Patterson, New Jersey, was the first man there to turn him in. Picture perfect. That play showed right away. Again, the interior defensive pit. He had to throw it immediately, and that gave the rest of the guys time to get out there and make the play. They don't want Owens loose in the flat. That's a fifth pass that Michael has caught this year. He had four for 29 yards coming into this one. And a race continues. Not much time left. Quick out pass for the tight end. It is incomplete at the 39 is Andrew Dees. We had to wait for a moment. Still had a shot as he went to the ground. Couldn't hold on. Again, McDonald with the cover. McDonald up on the last play to make the tackle, and then watch 48 on the coverage. This is not an easy play with the play action. L look at McDonald forcing him to make a perfect throw. Shar made the perfect throw. It's just a tough catch. Good defense and pretty good offense, too. 9-6, Panthers on top. Will knock him.
him down for a nine-yard loss. They say he's got big playability, a true freshman, number 92, 275-pounder, and right away, the fine offensive line of Syracuse is not handling the defensive line of Pitt. Turnell Sims is an all-star candidate. He was run over. Kenny Hawkins, let's see if Pitt comes after him again. This time the Panthers had the return on good heavens. Good kick. Back to the 13 yard line. Hampton, he'll come out across the 25. Well, with Pittsburgh's tough schedule this season, we asked Coach Mike Gottfried if he changes his preparation in any way. We've tried to focus in on every ball game and not pay attention to the schedule. If you look at our schedule, it's drive you crazy. Uh, I vote for the UPI. I thought they said vote not play the top ten. And uh, we're going to play them. Uh, we're going to have a great idea who the best team in the country is before it's all over. But uh, what we try to do is each week get ready for the team we're going to play and not worry about anybody else. His Panthers lead by three. Straight up the middle, first time that we've seen Evan Richards tonight takes it for short yardage. The entire front collapses on him, but Terry Wooden, number 90, was the first man to get up and put a shoulder pad on him. I do. Need, I need to make a point about what Mike said. They take them one at a time, but they have prepared for the option. The option gave them a problem, and since last spring, they have been playing against the option in practice, trying to get ready for it. This is an option team, Syracuse. Defensively, it was a nightmare for them. Ball is fumbled. Ben Pelt comes down on it at the 24-yard line. Let's take a look at the Syracuse defense. DeRiggi is the nose guard. The tackles, Rooks, and Rob Burnett. The outside linebackers, Alvin Brown and Terry Wooden. The inside backers, Dan Busey and David Bavaro. Greg Walker and Waitman are the corners and the safeties, Tim Sanquist and Rob Thompson. If you're asking Bavaro, familiar name, yes, it is his older brother who plays for the Giants. Van Pelt, quick out ball. Does Tooten almost get his head here taken off by Greg Walker? The third down pass. Tooten was right there for the reception. But Walker, who's only a sophomore out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, came over to tag him good. Brian Greenfield, 66 yards, his longest. You can see the average. He has done a super job. Greg Walker in a single safety for Syracuse. Greg Walker, deep for Syracuse. Left footed kicker. Takes a sip, bounces off the Syracuse player, and is recovered by Pitt. Robert Bradley. Number 16 came up with the football. This should never happen on a short kick on any kind of kick you've got. And you never turn your back on the ball. I can't pick up the number. It has a two on it. You never turn your back on the ball, even to block. You need to get away. Be aware of where the ball is. That was a, a big mistake, a big error for Syracuse. So Pitt with the first and 10 at the Orangeman 36 yard line, leading by three. Ben Pelt looking past, has it complete right over the middle to Truitt. And that is good for a Panther first down at the 25 yard line. Olanda Truitt. He's a freshman, 6'1", 190 pounds. Again, Paul Hackett's influence, it really can't be overstated. Truitt, the inside receiver, very simple pass for the quarterback, short drop. Not much of a likelihood of being intercepted. Pitt executing very well. Broadway, Adam Walker takes it down to the 22-yard line and it is covered up in orange and white. Pick a number. That will just about get it for you. As Busey, one of the first men there, great compliment played uh, to both Busey and Babaro that they are so very consistent. And Coach Max said that that's one part of his ball club he simply doesn't worry about. Now, Rhonda had 30 tackles between them last year against Pitt. 
What was it, Mike Eifert said, we simply cannot have those two guys <laughs> with that right. kind of evening again. And I think that's fairly obvious. Time out of the field with six minutes, 29 seconds left in this opening period. And the Panthers leading nine to six. Let's look at some other scores in college football. Ole Miss jumping in front. That's a great rivalry between the Southwest and the Southeast. Stanford has defeated the Ducks. Cal in Wisconsin, that one's now final. Golden Bears get a big one in. And Duke, oh, that's come out on top good. of Virginia. A dukey defense has to hold, though, and that's uh, they've had a rough time so far this year. Rob Barnett left the field under his own steam. You can see he's being attended to. 6'4", 265-pound senior. An All-American candidate. Down at the 18-yard line, it's Dan Bavaro from that inside linebacking position. He has one sack of the year. You know, not only is his brother played for the Giants, his dad played for San Francisco back in 60 and 61. And they too were studs. Pitt has rushed five times for 10 yards. They have had trouble rushing the ball. They didn't really expect to rush it against Syracuse, but they needed for balance. Third down. Panthers, they need the 15-yard line. That's Eric Seaman coming into the lineup, bringing a play, and with that, Pitt is going to have to fall out. A timeout to keep away from a five-yard penalty. So there's a break in the action with 5.38 left in the opening period. We'll be right back. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Great to have you along tonight, and this has been a super start. Both clubs scoring on their opening play. Running play with Redman, and he will not be close to the first down. In fact, he might not have gained anything in the play. As Dan Busey from that inside linebacking spot is the first man to step up and make the hit on him. Two things here. Very difficult to run out of a single back against a team that reads into the backfield as Syracuse does. They're tough against the run. The other thing is in the hash marks, if you're going to set up a field goal with a running play, you would want to run it to the center of the field. They've run it now to the right hash mark and have to kick from the right hash mark. Field goal. Frazier to attempt. Good on his first one of the night from 39. This one, an attempt of 35. Distance hit the upright and it is no Kick good. No good. Wide to the left. So Frazier's attempt off to the left. Oh, ESPN's presentation of college football continues on Thursday night when Division One AA Power Idaho will play host to Big Sky rival Montana. Barry Tompkins and Gene Washington will be there for all the action that begins at 8 o'clock Eastern time. It also will get a chance to see Idaho's All-American quarterback, John Freeze. The pros like this young man. Syracuse stops the drive and from their own 20. And you can see there is not much running Michael over there. Owens, Jeff the Esters, a sophomore out of Dania, Florida, steps up into the hole, number 97, to make the hit. The second team defense is on the field. And, Kevin, you might talk about this. Well, Bob Valicente is the new defensive coordinator, and they are going to platoon their defense. They did it against BC. They won it 29 to 10, had great success. These are not three or four different players. This is this, like hockey. Everybody yeah, came over the right. board. Hockey. This is 11 guys. <laughs> that's right. Came over the boards. And they're good. They're good. They're not much of a drop off. Shark under pressure and he will be sacked. Tom Sims, a senior out of Detroit who had an interception last week, comes in with a quarterback sack. Well, how good are they? <laughs> well, they're pretty good. Last week, Esters, or two weeks ago, Esters batted one to Sims, and Sims had an interception. Here he just blows through that fine line of Syracuse, 
and gets the sack. The reason that they substitute Tom Sims for Siragusa or Spindler, he's a tackle, is because they want fresh people in there and they want to press. Mike Godfrey does like basketball all over the field the entire game. They want fresh people. Looks like it's working. Syracuse needs the 30. Draw play. Ball is fumbled and Pitt has recovered. Richard Allen on the football at the one. You better believe they're fresh. Watch number 54. Mike Boykin, he reads it, pops the ball with his helmet. Now here comes Allen. Everybody on his team's coming off knee surgery, including Allen. No problem. He drops on the ball on the one yard line. Two defenses, two turnovers. Two tight in the line. So the fumble by Kinnon, and the Panthers need only one play to capitalize as Derek Lewis scores the touch. throwing oranges on the field. I think we had this problem before. I think I said last year it's a good thing it's not the Syracuse Buffaloes. <laughs> Frazier is good with his kick. Derek Lewis, 225 pounds, but he's small bones so he can fly, and he does. No defense going to stop a guy who can get that high from the one yard line. Pittsburgh is in. Look at the blocking on the offensive line. This has been a problem, but they do just well enough to move him out, keep him low. Lewis has plenty of room to get up and over. Great block by Sistelli. Operating at center tonight. And Lewis scores the touchdown. It is 16 to 6. The Panthers have bolted on top. And we still have 312 left to play opening period. Kev, the last three times that these ball clubs have met, it's been Pitt who made the mistakes. Tonight, it's the Orangemen who have gotten off to the rocky start. I, I think you have to go back to the quarterback problems Pitt has had through the years. They have had a tremendously difficult time finding a starting quarterback here. Dickerson was their guy. He was gone. A lot of the takeaways or giveaways that they've had through the years have been because of that volatility in the quarterback position. And any improvement they make, you have to give to the young quarterback, Alex Van Pelt, and, of course, Paul Hackett, the coordinator. But we're not done yet, and you're looking at one of the finest coaches in the country there, Dick McPherson. He'll get him rolling. Walker, number 33, Ismail on the other side, and that is Jeff Van Horn that you see. This is Ismail at the eight. Out to the 26-yard line. Prentice Wright on the special teams as we take a look at some other scores. Arkansas not only has an answer for Ole Miss, but two tallies on the board. Florida State out big over Tulane. Boy, Tech and South Carolina locked up in a good one. And Duke has added a field goal. Our score, 16 to 6. Screen to Kenan to 
fullback. 35 at the 40. He is free and is going to be knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line by Crossman. He was about the last man there. 29 yards to Dwayne Kennedy. Excellent call and excellent, excellent execution. Shaw right away to Kinnon. Look, they let Spindler in. Then they drop the ball here to Kinnon. Now, Kinnon gets a great block at the corner. And he's down the road. If not for Crossman, the converted running back, he'd have been all the way. That was Bednar's? Yes. Was that Bednar's made the block. Kinnon did the running. Good call, good execution by the orange man. Owens with the pitch, going to be hit in the backfield, and he will be knocked down by Curtis Gray. Gray from here in the Pittsburgh area, Monroeville, 6'4", 235. And Owens, who wears that number for good reason. When they give you 44 at Syracuse, they expect big things. Better get, get to running and keep running. That's right. When you're wearing 44, <laughs> this we're going to have to keep track of this for you. This, again, is the first team or the other team defense for uh, for Pitt, the first, the team that started the game. Three carries for Owens for four yards so far. <laughs> On the option, the pass, he will not get it away. He is sacked, and it's 98 Syracuse as the first team defense is back on the field for Pitt. Oh, my goodness. And they are fresh. Tony Saragusa coming off major knee surgery. A kid who's had an awful rough year. Took him a year and a half, number 98, to get over this. One of the great tackles in the country before the surgery and coming back. His dad died last year. Came to Mike Godfrey and said, when are things going to get better? Mike said, don't worry, Tony. They will get better. Moments later, he was hit in the head with a football. Looked for Coach Godfrey and said, when? Now, Tony. Shard going long, and it is complete at the 12-yard line to Carpenter. We pause for a moment thinking it might be intercepted. Alonzo Hampton had the cover, and Carpenter took it away from him. Hampton, one of the fine quarterbacks in the country, number three. Now Carpenter has thrown one, and this is just incredible effort by number seven. It's a jump ball. Either one could have gotten it. Shar threw it inside perfectly. Carpenter makes the grab, and here's Coach McPherson. Here we go. We're in scoring position. Coach Max says, okay. <laughs> Owens, left side at the five. So Syracuse with an answer, and with one minute left in this opening period, we are looking for the 29th point to be scored. up to attempt the extra point. Missed his first tonight. This one he is perfect on. You know, Kev, you really can't say so much for the defensive battle because there has been some head knocking. Well, watch Flannery, 53 at the line of scrimmage at number 62, Turnell Sims. Here he comes. And here comes Owens, says, I'll see you, Turnell. I'm going this way. And when you wear 44, as we said for Syracuse, Ernie Davis, Jimmy Brown wore it, Floyd Little wore it, and now Michael Owens. Take another look at this from the side. You're going to see 62, big 62. Turn up. Owens gets his hand on him. <laughs> and Owens goes in. Turnell is 6'3", 285. Doesn't move like it, does he? Yeah, supposed to have a bad knee. It's a good thing he doesn't have too good knees. They've given him the ball. Michael Owens scores his third touchdown of this young season. I told you this would be a low-scoring game. Well, the defense up hit on the other side of the field looking on. You know, the interesting thing, he's up 
to the score, the completion of the long pass, and Hampton was playing center field. He was looking to the interception, just had it taken away. Pitt had gotten to Syracuse quarterbacks three times already against an offensive line that is intact for the third year, all five. And Syracuse, when Syracuse did get the big play, they got it against their best defensive back, Hampton, which is odd. This is Israel at the 10. Israel with a head of speed out of the 30. He'll come out to the 33-yard line for Daryl Jones. Makes the tackle. Let's take a look at that scoring drive. Five plays, 74 yards, just over two minutes. And Owens gets the talent. Coach McPherson possibly breathing a little easier. His ball club still trailing right now, 16-13. 54 ticks left on the clock. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This time last night, we were really worried about bad weather for you. It was raining like the Dickens. And you go itis. Van Pelt squares, overthrow. Henry Tootin was the man that he was looking for, and it got away from him just a bit. Not an easy pass going against the grain. Van Pelt's a kid that has not a really a, a real strong arm. We talked to Paul Hackett, but he, what he can do is make the ball come down. He can throw into zones very well. He can get it over that first part of the zone, the underneath coverage, and make it drop in. He has talent, needs to strengthen the arm, and they expect him to be a fine quarterback. Richards, I beg your pardon. All the way out to the 45-yard line before Rob Thompson comes over to make the stop. And that's a gain of 13 yards and a Panther first down. One of the keys to this game is they're making Wooden play a tight end. They have two tights. They line up Lionel Sykes over the All-American linebacker, number 88. Look at the block. And then when Kervin gets to swerving, it could be real tough as he gets up the sideline. A wide play, the big block from the tight end. Pitt's most successful running play of the game. Richards again, hole on the left side. That's where they like to run it, across midfield and down to the 49-yard line of Syracuse. Alvin Brown made the tackle. Alvin Brown coming up from that left outside linebacking spot, one of the first men to make the tackle. But it's the blocking of the twos and gets. A couple of seniors that they like to run behind. It appears that Pitt will be comfortable with allowing the clock to run out to end the first period, which has seen more action than most thought we would see tonight. At the end of the 16-13, our score, so let's 16, take a break as the Panthers are on top. We've got a lot of time left. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley. Got the ideas defensively, Kev? <laughs> Pelt dumps it off to Redmond, and his fullback will be close to the first down, just inside the 45. Babaro wrapped him up just as soon as he made the catch. Watch how deep number 59 is. He's about five yards off the line of scrimmage. See that? He's not even looking at running. He heads immediately for the sideline and is able to stop him. But I don't know whether he stopped him before he had a first down. Excellent linebacker play from an inside backer right there, David Babaro. We mentioned the, the pennant race. Of course, not only will we uh, continue to update you, San Francisco gets one back for the Astros, who had one last night in that big tough tussle out in the uh, National League West. Come back with the uh, scores and highlights later on this evening. Sixteen to thirteen, our score. Pittsburgh. Leading over the Orangemen. On first down, this is Richards as a marker comes down, and it looks like it's going to be offensive holding against Pitt. Rob Burnett, the senior out of Corum, New York, steps up into the hole to make the hit. It 
hands on Caligar, Caligar, the uh, center, Mike Gottfried's center for Pitt. First down becomes extremely important, is important in any game, but very important when you have a young quarterback. There's the man who did the holding. Caligar has been moved from center to guard, back to center. In this game, he began at guard. He's back to center. The reason is he's a very fine lineman. They had a little trouble on the right side of the line. They needed to get a stronger guy in there. Evidently, they feel that he's going to better serve them at center. But let me go back to Van Pelt. I really think that Van Pelt, a penalty like this really hurts him because he only has one interception. They don't want to put him in a position where he has to throw deep and that Syracuse knows he's going to throw. He's 5 for 6, 87 yards to this point. And Pelt has a man wide open at the 32. Knocked out of bounds is Reggie Williams. His second catch of the year out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Here's what we talked about, dropping the ball over people. Watch 55, Busey, the linebacker. He's going to get deep. And look at Van Pelt. Oh, it's not, it's not 55, Busey. It's 37. Drops the ball right over him and into the zone. That was Tim Sanquist, the defensive back, that he dropped it over, and that's what he does very well. He drops it over the zone, and he's extremely accurate. Van Pelt now with 100 yards passing. He's 6 for 8. Adam Walker spins off one tackler, and he will not get by the second as Brian LeBaron. A backup outside linebacker comes up to make the stop on him on the 30, and that'll be a loss of a couple. Texas Tech at Oklahoma State there in the first quarter. Rice Owls trailing Southwest Louisiana in the second. San Jose winning over Pacific. Second period, Western Carolina on the short end of that one, 14 to nothing, Appalachian State. We've got just over 13 minutes to play here in Pittsburgh, and what has been a great one. Van Pelt swings it out. That's Adam Walker. Puts a head down to the 25-yard line. Greg Walker. And now a late marker comes back into the backfield. It was thrown toward Lionel Sykes, the tight end. And he was totally away from the play. I don't know if you could hear what he said or read what he said, but he said 72, who is uh, Chris Getz, senior out of Jackson Heights, 6'3", 280 pounds. What they're saying on the sideline is they're discussing. Fifteen-yard penalty. Yeah, they're discussing the call, and Mike's discussing it with his assistant, Mike Gottfried, and they're saying he's just pass blocking. There's no foul. He's just pass blocking. 72 blue gets. That's not just pass blocking. That's a good shot, guys. He grabbed him with it. He grabbed him in the hand with the face mask, and that is a personal foul. No need for it that far from the play, as you pointed out, Ron. That was quite a distance from the play. So they'll repeat second down. And for Pitt, they had driven down to the 28-yard line, so they need the 18. The new line of scrimmage all the way back at the 47. Get shovel pass right up the middle, fumbles the ball, scramble for it. Redmond trying to recover it. Syracuse says they have it. Let's see. Syracuse football. It's a good call in this situation, almost like a draw. See that little shovel right there to Redmond, number 22. He has it, and then it's pulled out. And Syracuse will, Syracuse will recover in the pile. Number 96, O'Rourke, is left hand. He gets a hold of the ball, and it's loose, and then Syracuse comes up with it again. Syracuse very sound defensively. Good play. And it looks like George Rooks, number 91, who came down to the football for Syracuse. Owens, slide 
digs his way up the middle to the 45. The Keith Hamilton, the Frenchman out of Lynchburg, Virginia. And nine total tackles coming into this ball game tonight is the man who wraps him up. 16 to 13, pit on top. As Syracuse took the opening kickoff and on the first play, Carpenter on a reverse took the ball and passed to Rob Moore for a touchdown. Pitt came right back with a distance job themselves to Henry Tootin, and we were tied at six. Char incomplete. Dwayne Kennedy's fullback had circled out Robert Bradley had picked him up on the coverage just about at the first down marker. It's going to be third down for the Orangemen at the 45. hit as he delivers the ball and it's caught. Good heavens, Rob Moore. He has a vertical of 43 inches, went high in the air, and he has it for 13 yards in the first down. It was 42 and a half. Saragusa is going to be licking at the Shar's knees when he throws this ball. This is pretty good defense, a lot of pressure. You see McDonald or Bray coming from the outside. Carnell Smith along with them, then 42 and a half inches there of the 43 for Moore to go up and catch it. Tremendous play. It's one that doesn't necessarily show up in the stats, but it's huge, particularly if you get points off the drive. <laughs> Looking for Carpenter, has it at the 30 yard line and knocked out of bounds immediately. Number five, Lewis Riddick. Comes over to bump him out, but it's a gain of 14. As the play action by Syracuse working nicely. Riddick gave him plenty of room there. And uh, in fact, Carpenter made two fakes, then finally just broke it off. And Shar, who is very accurate, they say maybe the most accurate passer ever at Syracuse, just waited and hit him, had plenty of time. Tom Sims back at the ball game at right defensive tackle. Fullback straight ahead, not much there for Kenneth. Mark Spindler, the 6'5 junior out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, along with Ricardo McDonald. Syracuse does not even have positive rushing yardage. Why? Watch 93. Holds him up, gets over there, and makes the stop for a yard or two. I mean, that's just super defensive tackle play. That's Bednar's trying to block him. He's getting lower than Bednar's, holding him up, able to see the ball carrier slide off and make the tackle. Char with the pass overthrown. Rob Moore, and you could see the timing to the play was thrown off with the defensive linemen getting through a little bit quicker than they wanted. There were blue shirts all over the place, but I thought Char did a tremendous job with no room, just moving around in there to stay on his feet. Keith Hamilton, number 92, is the man who was applying lots of pressure. You saw the numbers just a moment ago on uh, Spindler, what he did last week. And of course, the night, besides what he has done as far as tackles, he partially blocked the punt back in the first quarter. Syracuse third down. They need the 20. Inside linebacker blitz is on, and Gobb will get him. Craig Gobb, a junior out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. For so many years, it was Jerry Osofsky was a fixture, but watch the right side of your screen. The heir to Osofsky, number 46, Greg Gobb. They never saw him. Turnell Sims was occupied, as was everyone else, and here they come. Bednars. 
Look how the and tackle Sims, takes the him tackles, inside. That's right, exactly, Ron. They occupy him. That's what you do in a blitz. You pull him aside, let that middle linebacker run through. That's great team defense. This cup with an attempt of 54 yards. And it's going to be a quick kick. He'll pooch it. And it's going to come out of bounds at around the 15-yard line. So the snap going directly to the place kicker. The kick good for 22 yards. Let's take a break. Panthers by three. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Syracuse versus Pittsburgh, is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. By Budweiser, Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Service, the better way to sell your home. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley. And I hope you're enjoying this one. And if you're not, uh, <laughs> get a pulse check. You're not watching. That's right. <laughs> Van Pelt puts it on his hip. Far sideline has a man wide open, and he underthrows it, looking for two. I beg your pardon for Truett. And the ball just a little bit underthrown. Nope, they say it was a reception. Coach Mack down the sideline, and he is questioning whether the ball was trapped or not. And it's good for 23 yards. I tell you, what a fake. What a team fake. Not just Van Pelt, but the running backs, everybody. Coach Godfrey talked yesterday about how very good this youngster was at an early age at faking the football. He has done it extremely well tonight. Richards on the running play. Cuts it back across the 40, and he's all the way out to the 44-yard line. That is good for 11 yards before Dan Busey puts the stop on him. Well, what's the storyline of this one so far, in case you have joined us late? Take a look at turnovers. That is very big. But in the category of sacks, Kev? Well, absolutely. And what that's doing is it's holding Syracuse's running game down, forcing them into passing situations. And that is not Syracuse's game. This is an option team, and they have not been able to get into their offense. Walker hands the ball off to Truett on the reverse. Picks up one block, and then it's going to be stymied he will have the first down at the 49 as Wooden stays at home. But not before the Panthers will move the chains across the way. It's a very difficult play to make work against a defense that's as well-schooled as uh, Syracuse and as confident in their front people as they are. Linebackers don't tend to over-pursue when their front is as strong as this front. And they've got Nariggi and Rooks and Burnett up there, so they can afford to sit a little bit. Whips it to the far sideline. Throws complete again to Reggie Williams. Good for nine yards. Marker is down across the way, just at the out-of-bounds mark. Question is whether Sanquist, Tim Sanquist, the strong safety, bumped him out-of-bounds or not. And that is going to be the call. You judge for yourself. Watch for number 37 in the white jersey. Again, a tremendous pass by Van Pelt to Williams. Well, Greg Walker actually yeah, 17. 17, not uh, 37, but clearly out of bounds when he hit him. Well, we talked off the top of the telecast that uh, these two ball clubs don't care a lot for each other. They want dominance in the East. We have had a lot of personal fouls in this ball game already. Adam Walker still on his feet. He'll be whistled down at the 24. Adam, a senior out of Homestead, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's a senior. Dan Busey defensively, the first man to come up and make contact for Syracuse. <laughs> Balance was a key offensively for Pitt in this game, Paul Hackett said, and I believe they've accomplished that so far in the first half. They've been excellent as far as keeping Syracuse's defense off balance. First down, seven passes, seven runs, and they have had success on those plays.
just outside the 10. Walker with pretty good coverage, but there was not much he could do. And I am really impressed with the freshman Van Pell. This is not a bullet. He may not be capable of throwing bullets, but watch how this ball comes down. It's short, and there's only one player that can get it. And that's Tootin. There was no chance of that being intercepted. Henry Tootin with a nice catch, Van Pelt, and they're picking apart a pretty good secondary. 10 of 12 for Van Pelt, 150 yards and a touchdown. Throws it over the middle, complete to Seaman, and he's going to be game tackled at the four-yard line. You see the first man, and then lots of help from friends. Seaman is a load to bring down at 6'4", 245, as a sophomore. Glenn Mills, Pennsylvania, as you can see, Syracuse with a player shaken up. That's George Rooks. He's holding his ribs. So with the officials time out, Van Pelt will come over to visit with his head coach and also his offensive coordinator. The numbers so far extremely good for the freshman from San Antonio, Texas. Over to right guard. They're talking to Paul Hackett in the booth. He is not on the field. Mike is, a, of course, Godfrey is an offensive guy from way back. He's a guy who likes to throw the ball, has not been able to throw it successfully here because of the problems at the quarterback position. He has to be happy tonight. Kevin, and looking on the field, one of the things that Pitt likes to do is go with three tight ends of the ball game, and Seaman, Hubner, and Sykes are all on the field right now. Sykes will line up as a wing to the right. He is the most dangerous receiver of this break. Inside handoff, breaking out the tackle, touchdown, Derek Lewis, his second. Second touchdown of the night. And his second of the season. Frazier with the extra point, it's good. Watch 88 Sykes. He's the guy in the backfield in front of Derek Lewis. Lewis gets hit. He's off of that one. Last time he went over, this time he went right through the Syracuse defense. Godfrey loves it. His ball club leading by 10. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Writing notes. He could be saying, right guard was good to us. And Coach Mack is saying, we got to get something going here. Down by 10 with just under six minutes to play in this opening half. The Panthers and the Orange. Here comes Van Horn's kick. Ismail at the 30. Look out, he can fly, and he's finally going to be knocked out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. Nelson Walker makes the tackle. The student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Get an edge on life, be all you can be. And tonight's recipient is Pittsburgh free safety, Lewis Riddick. Lewis is an economics major with a 3.4 grade point average, and he lists becoming a Rhodes Scholar as one of his goals. Look at him. As a brother who has done extremely well. Char on the option. Pitches back to Owens. He will go nowhere. And that's Mark Gunn who played it absolutely to the team. No! You gotta get it! 
Boy, that's a battle, huh? Arkansas, Mississippi. South Carolina at halftime, now by a couple of touchdowns. Virginia has come off the mat. And Texas Tech by a touchdown over the Cowboys. It's that second team defense again in for Pittsburgh. Sack Tom Sims again. And that sends Coach Mack down the line in a hurry. Boy, this works pretty good, this two defense thing, doesn't it? These guys look mighty quick. You know, one of the things that he said was, uh, that Bob Valacete said was he wants to get him in because they're fresh, they're quick. That's five sacks. But that second team defense, remember how they stopped them deep in their own territory, and then they turn around, got that turnover, and now they're just running over that offensive line. Draw play, Owen has an opening, and now more, and he gets tripped up as he crosses the 40, and it's Sims who got a hand on him. Kevin, he was loose in the secondary, and he might have had much more. All right, they turn that aggressiveness against them. Here they come again, passing situation. Everybody, they're getting a little out of their lanes. Now here's Owens. Doug Betzler in the, def Hetzler in the defensive secondary just gets picked down by Owens and almost, Michael almost picks up the first down, but not quite. Proud, a big hand for that second team defense. It was Kennan with the good block. Not enough for the first down. Just got a look at Hampton. He is the deep man in the single safety for the Panthers. No Hampton deep for Ben. Clock runs down. And I think Syracuse will not be overly upset. And now Coach Mack on the field. saying that the 25 second blocks don't jive, I believe, Kevin. Whatever he's saying, he's saying it. So the five yards stepped off. Hey, Tommy! Guys! 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 Guys, come here! Hey! Come here! I call timeout! Syracuse will take the timeout. That's his clock. You can't do it. It's an error, honey. It was on 10, goddammit. He saw it was on 10. I think you're right, Ron. I think what he's saying is one clock says, obviously, one clock is saying one thing, but the clock that Syracuse is looking at at 10 seconds. He's at the other end. That's right. Okay, Tom Favors is the referee tonight. Hold it, hold it. No, you don't shut him down. Oh, shit. Hey, wait a minute. Now, listen. Just relax. Don't worry about a thing. We got only five yards, 10 out of one. Just want to get after him, okay? Do you understand? So with three minutes and 30 seconds left until halftime, Coach McPherson getting his point made to the officials that either the clocks are not sequenced or there is a number or some maybe some lights that is out, that are out. There you get a look at it. And the numbers, you can see the lights are not all on. All the bulbs are not working properly. Kev, he's got a good point. And I believe the official picked up the flag, did he not? Or didn't he? No, they didn't. And now, Thamert comes over to the near sideline and is going to talk to the pit bench. I think they're considering shutting down the clocks. Part of this might be the fans hanging over, obscuring their view. So they have 
checked out the 25 second clocks and we're about to play football again. Ken Hawkins to punt for Syracuse. The penalty will stand. Hampton will let it bounce. Take it on the big hop at the 15. Breaks off one tackle and he was one away. Tony Matamora is the man who made the tackle. We'll come back and talk about the mystery clocks in just a moment. Well, we now have had an explanation. The 25-second clocks have been turned off because the bulbs were malfunctioning and the one to the south end of the stadium. They will keep the time on the field for the remainder of the ball game unless they get it repaired at halftime. We have had a little bit of everything in this first half. Yes. It, and if you join us late, what a start. Kickoff, first play, touchdown Syracuse. Kickoff, first play, touchdown Pitt. Ben Pelt with the fake, dumps it off of the flat, throws it complete out at the 30-yard line as Ronald Bretton, his fullback. Sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Started off at tailback, had the spring, and then they moved him over to the fullback spot. Yeah, you know why? I think that's that's another Paul Hackett thing. Uh, in the pros, your tailbacks, fullbacks are interchangeable, all pass receivers for the most part. And Redman is more of a complete player. As you notice, though, Derek Lewis scored both touchdowns, but Redman's in there for first down to give him more flexibility offensively. Happy to report that George Rooks is back in the ball game for Syracuse. First man through, and it's the fullback again, Redmond, and he will take it close to the first down at the 30. Clock nearing three minutes until halftime. The Panthers leading by 10. Third and one, and then at their own. Again, I, I, need to, I need to tell you that the, the linebackers for Syracuse will read into the backfield, and you get that fullback involved in the offense like this, it can cause you a lot of problems. And, uh, and he is having a big game. And one of the reasons the fullback, Derek Lewis and Redmond, have been successful is because they're crossing up that Syracuse defense. Richards fumbles the ball, still on the ground, and it's recovered by Syracuse. Number 17, Greg Walker, comes off the artificial surface, and that's exactly what the Panthers didn't want to have happen. They wanted something sustained in this last three minutes, having the football, and to go in with at least a 10-point, if not more. This play, this, this play was broken. Excellent blocking up front. Watch Busey, 55. He overruns it a little bit, gets caved in, and Richard just gets a hand up and gets that ball. Looked like he just got his hand on Kervin Richards, and the ball popped loose. Either that or as he pumped, maybe hit his head gear. Or hit his head gear. <laughs> Full back goes left side. Kennett will take it to around the 47 yard line. Now they say the 46. Defensively, Ricardo McDonald. Turnovers in the ball game so far. They have been big as far as Pitt is concerned, and we will see in this last two minutes and one second if Syracuse can make it large for themselves. Shard chased out of the pocket inside the 35, and he's down to the 34 as Carney Smith from his right defensive end to make the tackle, but not before a gain of 11. Shar over the middle, intercepted by Pittsburgh. Curtis Gray steps in front and makes the pickle at the 25-yard line. Andrew Dees, the tight end, the intended receiver, and he comes back to talk to his quarterback and exactly what happened. 
Pitt used to primarily be a man-to-man -man team, but watch him go back in the zone and cross up Shar. Now they want to go to 86 Ds right in the center of your screen. But look at the two linebackers sitting in the zone. Gob. I sure, Chief, he didn't catch it. Gob was yeah, going to pick Gob it up. Yeah, was right there. Now here comes the pressure. But still at all, that's a ball that maybe shouldn't have been thrown, but the defense was there. And again, the zone again, that very, not really typical of Pittsburgh. Hamilton, of team. Hamilton, number 92 with a hand in his face. Ben Pelt sets the screen. Redmond, oh, he gets taken down the hard from behind at the 30-yard line. Fred DeRitchie, the senior out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, will nail it. No huddle for the Panthers as the clock runs down to 118 and now 117. Van Pelt has it complete to Williams across the 50 and he's down at the 48 as Greg Walker makes the stop but it's good for 23. And a timeout has been called by Pitt. So let's take a break. 62 seconds left until the halftime, but the Panthers leading 23-13, and I have a feeling the fireworks are not done. And control are the keys when NASCAR drivers battle on the fast half-mile track at Martinsville. See the Goodies 500 Sunday afternoon at 12.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. In the middle with the glasses on, that is Paul Hackett and his protege, Alex Van Pelt, down on the field, having a big night and doing big things in the second quarter, 11 for 11, and moving the Pittsburgh team now into Syracuse territory with a minute two left. There it is. They go with the draw play. Will be stopped after a couple of yards, maybe three. Interesting thing about Van Pelt, freshman redshirt out of San Antonio Churchill, but he moved from the state of West Virginia after his sophomore year. He moved because he felt the competition was better where he was going and that they would take a harder look at it, the major college. Over the middle, complete to Baron Jackson. Down to the 23. And folks, we saw Jackson go down injuring his ankle at practice on Thursday, but he didn't show any signs of it there. 12 for 12. Dick McPherson saying this guy's a freshman quarterback. I don't want to see him grow up. Pass to Tootin. He'll be bumped out of bounds. That'll stop the clock as he's hit at the 22 by Greg Walker. 24 seconds left until the halftime. Van Pelt's from Grafton, West Virginia. Played in a small school. There it is. 17 for 19. 217 yards in the first half, including that bomb that he threw to start the game. Here's the pass two passes ago. Talk about accuracy over the zone. Walker had him covered about as well as you can cover it. Redmond cracked down hard. 59 Bavaro just makes him disappear. And now as the clock runs down, we'll look to see if Pitt tries to get off one more play or if they send the field goal unit in. He'll throw this one away, complete to a trainer on the far sideline, and that's his first incompletion of the second quarter. Good heavens. <laughs> crowd well, it was caught. Yes. A student caught it on the far side. The crowd is booing, but I think one of the things that's been done here, they have not put that uh, the young quarterback in a position to fail, and they're not going to do it now. They're not going to let him try to force it into the end zone. They're going for the three. Hetzler is the hole. Frazier to attempt this field goal for the 27, and now Syracuse calls a timeout. I want it with those guys in there, then call a timeout. Well, we have four seconds left. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the US F and G halftime with uh, Bob Carpenter. And uh, Bob will have scores from around the country and also highlights of today's big ball games. 
I know one he'll be talking about is a team that will be involved here at ESPN next Saturday as West Virginia got a scare down in Louisville before a totally sold out house. Cardinals is a good ball club. A lot of people feel that maybe West Virginia should have won that game. Hey, they should have won anyway, but Louisville, Louisville's a team on the rise. Going down there against Howard Schnellenberger, they really wanted that, and beating them coming from behind in Louisville says a lot about that West Virginia program. They can rise to the occasion. Well, on game day this morning at 11.30 Eastern time, and I hope you watch that show each week. Great story in Louisville. And, uh, the changes that have come about down there. Let's go. And I think they talked about the capacity of that stadium. I think, I don't know if the fire marshal was there now, but I think they're about 3,000 over, weren't they? 38,000 was 3,000 more that they could hold. Howard's on a 15-year plan down there. He's got 13 left. Frazier with the attempt, 37 yards. Plenty of distance and off to the left and no good. So they head to the locker room with our score. The Pittsburgh Panthers, 23, and Syracuse, 13. We're going to take a break. Now let's go to Bob Carpenter. All right, Ron, thank you very much. And Pittsburgh hoping that missed chip shot will not come back to haunt them a little later. It's our USF&G halftime report. Scores and highlights from around the nation for you. And let's get started right now with teams playing in the top 20, 25 and games in progress tonight. First of all, Michigan at UCLA at the Rose Bowl. First time they've met since the Rose Bowl in 1983. And with 55 seconds left in the first quarter of play, a controversial touchdown for UCLA's Kevin Williams. Was he over? The official bottom of your screen says yes, he was before he fumbled the football. The other angle from the high 50-yard line camera. And you get a look at it with 55 seconds remaining first quarter. The Bruins take the lead on that touchdown plunge with or without the football. They're in the second quarter now, and UCLA leads it by a score of 7-0. Nebraska is at Minnesota, and in the Metrodome tonight, it's Ken Clark with a six-yard touchdown run. The Huskers lead it 7-0 second quarter. Arkansas is having a real fight with Mississippi and Jackson. A late field goal by the Rebels. It's tied 17-17 in the third quarter. The rest of the top 25 highlights and scores coming up in a moment. So stay with us on the USFNG Halftime Report. We're at halftime of Syracuse at Pitt. Offensive game in Pittsburgh. Orangemen and Panthers set for the third quarter. Thanks so much, Bob. Well, it really hasn't disappointed anyone. I guess even the Syracuse fans who have seen some turnovers that uh, they were not extremely happy about and also about that. The clock, which Hugo could have played a part in that because they were working on that just the other day at the stadium. Possibly some water got in. They're going to try to use it in the second half if they can get that thing functional. 23-13 at halftime. What are your feelings about the first half? Were you surprised this many points? Oh, yeah. Huh? yeah, I was amazed. Two plays, two touchdowns. I think the offensive line of uh, Pittsburgh and the defensive line have dominated the game pretty much, and, uh, except for a couple of passes from Syracuse. I think that's been the story. I think you can look for the Orangemen to blitz their brains out in the second half. They've got no pressure on Van Pelt. Kev, we talked so much off the top of the telecast about the great linemen, offensively and defensively, for both of these teams that we would see in action tonight. I think Mark Spindler is a great example uh, for Pittsburgh and the job that he has done and helping that unit. One of five players ever to start as a freshman for Pitt. Uh, really at a historical event. Now, here he is back in 1987. Watch how high he is as a freshman starting number 93. See how high he is and how the offense got under him. I want to show you a shot from tonight. He gets blown off. He still makes the play back when he was a freshman. Now look at number 93. He's the guy who's underneath. That's two years later. So Mark Spindler making plays like that tonight and really throughout his career, he has really improved as has the Pittsburgh defensive line. Would you like to say hi to your mom, Ron? Oh. Hello, Mom. Hello, Mom. She, said, she saw us on camera there, and I just wanted to say hi to Mrs. Franklin and myself. 23 to 13, our score as we get set to get it started here in the second half in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the temperature continues to come down. No rain, thank goodness. But I have a feeling that the Panther fans can't feel it or are not bothered by temperature in the 30s tonight because their ball club is white hot right now. 23-13, and those 23 points, Kev, representing more points than they have scored in an entire ball game against Syracuse since 1981. The balance of their offense has really been the key. They've done a tremendous job keeping Syracuse's defense off balance. Israel and Duvall, the dual safety. 
back for Pittsburgh. John Biscop to kick it off for Syracuse. This will be Israel at the 11. Breaks it up and whoa, what a hit. Good heavens at the 30 yard line as Kevin Barker, one of the first men to come across and make contact. And also 51, Matt Greco. I'd like to have heard some of the comments in the locker room by Coach McPherson at halftime, what he had to say to his ball club. I'm surprised we couldn't hear him up here. I think what you're going to see here is a little bit of a different defense from Syracuse. They are traditionally very, uh, uh, well, they're fundamental. They don't blitz a lot. I think they're going to come after him here. Running play, Richards right at the middle, breaks it for 10, counted off at 12. 25, Rob Thompson, the junior, comes over to make the stop. He's the free safety. We talked about how they key backs here. Watch the backs. See the fullback going way wide. Richards goes right up the middle, takes the linebackers. The fullback takes the linebackers a little bit with him. And Richards, with that quick feet, he makes it up the middle for a big gain. Six carries, now 58 yards for that guy. You can see the linebacker on the right, just as you said, Kev, just disappear. This time it's the fullback. And Redmond, check it, Derek Lewis in the ballgame. We'll take it out to the 45. DeRiggi, the nose guard. Comes over to make the first hit on him. The halftime stats, these tell the story pretty well, particularly when you look at uh, attempted and completed in passing for Pitt. And rushing yards. Those are the two key stats. And also sacks. Five. This young man has not been sacked or was not in the first half. Redmond this time ran into his own blocker for a moment, brought it up to the 48. Bavaro from his inside linebacking spot. Dan Navarro, 6'2", 230 pounds, a senior. Very consistent player on this defensive unit for Syracuse. Pitt needs the 48 of Syracuse. Tutin complete at the 30-yard line. Greg Walker was all over him, and again, Ben Pelt just threaded the needle, this time for 22. Well, Syracuse did blitz on this play. Number 59, Bavaro, came. So did the other backer. But look at Van Pelt just standing in there. And again, the accuracy, incredible to tune. I mean, that's pretty good coverage by Syracuse. From just outside the 30-yard line, Panthers on the move. Richard, big yardage again in the vicinity of the 20-yard line as Bavaro has to make the stop. And all of a sudden, Richards, the man they called Swervin Kerbin, now seven carries for 68. Matus and Chris get 62-72. Watch George Rooks, number 91, gets pinned inside. That's a Burnett, number 70, going down to Richards. Richards could have taken two friends right through the middle. Chris Steele also making a big block in there. Just a great job by the offensive line of Pitt. Pullback goes through. They try to crack him off the left side. That's Lewis. Again, it's one of those things, Kevin, they use they almost influence with the blocking as though they're going to zone and, and maybe either go right side or take it outside to the right. They try to bring the fullback back in the short. Well, what they've done here throughout the evening is they have thrown the ball so successfully and worked that play action so successfully that Syracuse in the back of their mind on every play is worried when they see a run, whether it's a pass. And that's going to make them stop that half second, makes it easier to block them and easier to run against them. Van Pelt dumps it out wide open as Redmond at the 10, at the 5, and it's first and goal pit. Dan Busey, the first man in the orange headgear to hit him, but he was all alone, as you could see. Pitt traditionally has not been a fullback-oriented team. This is new. Now, Kervin Richards, number 27. A little pick block there. 
They get tangled up with him, and watch Redmond, number 22. He's the last man out, the last linebacker, usually the worst coverage guy, covers the fullback, and they have eaten him up on that play. Fullback straight ahead, touchdown number three for Lewis. you saw about the picture a moment ago, Kermit Richards is the man who gets all the publicity, and that was Richards who was picking up Redmond to congratulate him, or rather Lewis, on his third touchdown of the night. Extra point attempt by Frazier is perfect. 88 is Sykes, number 55, Dan Busey, the linebacker, inside wing block. Nice play by Busey, comes and meets the block, but here's Derek Lewis, he didn't get enough help, and 225 pounds, you're gonna see it, watch 55. He gets stopped, nobody can stop Lewis, Lewis powers in for a touchdown. And the other man that you saw was number 51, Sestilli leading the block, 30 to 13. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Syracuse versus Pittsburgh, is brought to you by your local authorized Porsche dealer. And by Tempstar Furnaces, you can rely on the star. Von Franklin and Kevin Kiley in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Panther Band playing away as their ball club has jumped in front by 17 points. Van Horn with the kickoff to the near side will go out of bounds and they'll do it over again back at the 30. Take a look at the first half possessions by Syracuse. First play, touchdown in case you missed it. Then lost yardage and punted. Lost yardage, fumble, fumble. Then 74 yards for a touchdown on that the fifth possession. And then a punt on the seventh. One of the things that Dick McPherson wanted to do, one of the objectives of their offense is to leave the ball inside the 40-yard line of Pitt. As you can see from that graphic, they have not been successful tonight doing that. Field position has helped the young quarterback a great deal, uh, Van Pelt for Pittsburgh, and he has taken advantage. Well, that man, I'm sure, discussed and linked the two fumbles that you saw on the possession chart and the interception. You don't do that against good football teams. You don't do it against anybody, but particularly as Pitt has demonstrated tonight, they are a very good team, as is Syracuse. Ismail at the five. At the 35 and out to the 37. 33 yards on the return. Don't forget, ESPN's College Football Saturday continues next week, beginning at 11.30 a.m. with College Game Day. Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook, and Lee Corso preview the day in college football. Then at 12.30, it's the Princeton Tigers taking on the Crusaders of Holy Cross. Then at 7.30, Kevin and I will be in Morgantown, West Virginia, where West Virginia won this afternoon. They will take on the same Pitt Panthers next Saturday night. The short drop, incomplete, looking for Rob Carpenter. Transfer out of Notre Dame. Carney Smith was up in the air with a hand in his face. Rob is out of Amityville, New York. You might, uh, I'm from New York also, not far from Amityville. Uh, you might wonder about Syracuse and their chances of coming back. Well, this, although we haven't seen it tonight, is an option team. And they have been forced out of the option. They are not a throwing team, although they have had some success, but they're going to be very predictable. And you can bet Pittsburgh is going to play a little soft on defense. Pressure on Shars. He sets up the screen. Owens makes a catch. Oh, my goodness, what a hit at the 30-yard line. And that's Mark Spindler, the man we talked about at halftime. Oh, you 
not only could hear it up here, you could feel it. They have to chain this guy up after practice. Watch 93, he's gonna make both ends of this play. Here he comes to force the pass with help, and then he turns around, look at the effort. Oh, hello, Mr. Owens. That's all American caliber stuff there. Death row. Mark Spimmer, right in the middle. Junior of Scranton, Pennsylvania, 6'5", 270 pounds. For Syracuse, third down, they need the 48. Shark gonna go long, looking for Rob Moore, and incomplete down at the 25 as Lewis Riddick had the cover on the play. Lewis Riddick. Remember his brother Rob. Great player. You bet. Ken Hawkins, fourth time to kick tonight. Alonzo Hampton, the lone back for the Panthers. came from the middle. This takes a Syracuse bounce and goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Well, continuing our Eastern football theme tonight, Lambert Trophy winners in the 80s. Take a look at that. Pittsburgh began the 80s. West Virginia last year in between Syracuse, Penn State, and Boston College. They're all dangerous, as uh, indicated by today's Penn State win over Boston College. They just squeaked by. West Virginia had a little trouble with Louisville, but they won the game. And then next week, West Virginia and this Pittsburgh team in Morgantown will be there, and that's going to be one heck of a game. Van Pelt goes to Richards. Right side, Ooh, he gets stood up by Dan Ducey, number 55. Also George Rooks, and let's go to Bob Carpenter. All right, Ron, Michigan at UCLA. A couple of former high school teammates will hook up. Brent Johnson, a six-yard bullet to Scott Miller. They played together at El Toro High School, Mission Viejo, now doing it for the Bruins, who lead 14-3, second quarter, Ron. Here you see our score with just under 10 minutes to play in this third period. Pittsburgh by a 17-point margin. And this young fella has simply been outstanding. Swings it out to Richards. Crosses the 35, and Pitt will be confronted with a third down. They'll still need about four. Here's Tim Sanquist up from a strong safety spot to make that hit. The thing that's so impressive about Van Pelt is there doesn't seem to be any hesitation. He knows exactly what he wants to do in there. And for a freshman, it's really incredible. tonight Syracuse pressured him pressure to go ahead and unload and covered and covered the pass at the same time you're right and what Van Pelt did again he didn't have any play and he just threw it over the head of the receiver where no one could get it except that receiver Good poise Great block. only the second punt of the night for Brian Greenfield Greg Walker in a single safety for the orange they'll be coming to get this Footer, wobbly spiral. It's going to be a tough one. Walker runs away from it. And it will go dead inside the 20 yard line. 47 yards on the punt. And when things are going right, they go right, say the Panthers. In the 100 years of Syracuse football, there is no number like 44. In 1956, Jim Brown combined power and grace on his way to attaining All-American honors. In 1959, the number was passed to Ernie Davis. Two years later, he would win the school's only Heisman Trophy. And in 1964, it was Floyd Little's turn. All he did was become the first three-time All-American in Syracuse history. 
And there's the man who wears it in 1989, Michael Owens, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Sharp drills it over the middle, complete to Chris Yenby, his tight end, a redshirt freshman out of Liverpool, New York, and he'll have five yards. For Owens tonight, seven carries, 31 yards, and one touchdown. It's his third of the season. Kevin, we mentioned back in the first half, though, that uh, when they give you that number, they expect not only good things, they expect great things. I think it's not only ability, you better give it to the right kid who has the right kind of psychological makeup where you can have a problem. This is Owens, and in the backfield, going to be knocked down. And it is Tony Siragusa, the first man, along with Mark Spindler. And for a scoring update, here's Bob Carpenter again. All right, Ron, this time we go to Tallahassee. Tulane at Florida State. Peter Tom Willis out of the game now, and Casey Weldon takes over. And a little dump off to Amp Lee, A-M-P, and he will turn on the Amps, and he will be gone. 88 yards, and Florida State's having a party at home. Leading to lane, 45-6 in the third quarter. Back to Pittsburgh. Bobby Bowden's ball club rolling again tonight. Shar on the run. Has it complete out to the 30-yard line to Rob Carpenter. Robert Bradley from his quarterback spot, senior out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, is there to make the stop. Interesting story in Carpenter. Notre Dame transfer. Really a, a great athlete decided that uh, he wanted to come back closer to home to play. He left the rocket and he found the missile when That's he got right. the Syracuse. <laughs> he can't get away from those this pile. <laughs> Owens on the draw. Tries to get it outside. You can see Ricardo Michael McDonald Owens, as the ball comes loose. <laughs> Play was over, and the official was too, almost. Yeah. What you see now is a team doing what exactly what they don't want to do. Nick McPherson has always been a very fundamental conservative coach. He's a guy who likes balance in his offense, and he will not be able to achieve that with 6.40 to go in the third quarter, and down by 17 points. They need to put it up, and they need to move down the field. scrimmage and that's Carney Smith and it's almost textbook again as you could see him playing off the blocker and then coming up with the quarterback. Pitt had the go watch 92 Keith Hamilton go right for the pitch man directly this is a freeze option look at 92 right side of your screen Shar has no chance he looks over there if he pitches it Hamilton's got it that's just tremendous defense and coaching did they read that thing or what? Well, it's third down, and they need just about the 41. Take a look at those numbers. Wow. For an option team, that's not good. Shark, good protection. In and out of the hands of more of all people. One of the more sure-handed, if not the most sure-handed player of the Syracuse club, but it was Riddick who ridded him of the football. Toughest thing, in the, again. Excuse me, Ron, toughest thing in the world to do is to block when you know the other team knows you're going to pass. Look at Bednard, 79, on our man Spindler. Tremendous job giving Shar enough time to throw the ball. A very difficult proposition. Four kicks for an average of almost 36 yards by Hawkins tonight. in kick and again Hampton's going to wait for the bounce and he'll take it on the good hop and oh my goodness gets a headgear right in the stomach just as he catches it. Hampton returns the punt for Pitt. Reggie Terry is the man who decked him. Let's take a break. 30 to 13 Pitt. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley. Western Pennsylvania. 
and probably is all 22 defensive starters for Pittsburgh since they don't just use 11 and a few substitutes. You get a, you you get a piece of a game ball here, I think, if you win. Richards puts a headgear down, and he will be stopped after a gain of about five by Dan Bavaro. Well, last night, Coach Mack was talking about his ball club loved to be on Saturday nights because it's it's peer night. And the fact that the rest of the country gets to see, and he said, not just other players, but other coaches. Well, as we, as we go around the country, we hear that, that they saw the game the week before and the, the, they get done with their game in the afternoon and they and they go home and they watch and I think that's a, a really a motivating factor for the players in these games. Richards. They run the reverse now the flea flicker up the far side and it's complete as he throws it right back to Kervin Richards who started the playoff. I, I have to tell you here that now this really is impressive from Van Pelt. The receiver they wanted to go to was Tootin. And here's you're going to see the little flea flicker, the reverse, but to see him look, Tootin's covered. Most guys would have thrown that ball at Tootin anyway, but instead he finds the secondary receiver on a flea flicker. And I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Kervin Richards made the catch, but Tootin was covered no, no. way downfield. Van Pelt no, no, checked man. off. Richards again as they work him, has five, has 10, counted off at 12. Tim Sanquist has to come up and belt him down. You could see on the scores just a moment ago, big win by the Cubs this afternoon, 3-2. We'll have those along with highlights and scores from all the major college football games on SportsCenter coming up at around 11.30 this evening. Kervin will get a breather. Caliguire. And Laborio, good blocking in that last play. Straight up the middle, this time Derek Lewis, who has three touchdowns in the game. Marker comes from down deep as the ball has been taken away. And it is Syracuse football. Pitt can't believe it. And the officials say, yes, it came loose. Derek Lewis, number 26, in his left hand. Busey gets his hand in there, the right hand, and the ball is loose. Although I don't know where it is. Bavaro, number 59, right side of your screen, falls on it, and it is Syracuse ball. So the Panthers leading 30 to 13 with just under four minutes to play third period, and a big break for the Orangemen. One of the best field positions they've had all night in taking the ball over. Sack for the sixth time tonight. He had a safety valve and Owens open to the near side, but he wanted to take it downfield. And it's Carney Smith. This is a coverage sack. The blocking was absolutely excellent. Look at Bednar's here, number 79, holding people out. Sims doing a great job. They really didn't get in. They get in from the backside because the coverage was there. Now, Shar has plenty of time to throw. He just can't find anyone. Back to the 45, so it's second down and 15. Shar on the option at the 50, and he'll be taken down there by Lewis Redding from his free safety spot. Nebraska shutting out Minnesota there in the third period. Arkansas continues to lead over Mississippi now by seven in the fourth Florida Memphis State good ball game They're still early not uh, at halftime yet in southern Mississippi and the Horn Frogs of TCU nodded Southern Miss after that big upset over Florida State's had a real difficult time Our situation a third down for Syracuse Come on, deep ball. Caliguire, fine offensive lineman for the Panthers. For Syracuse to keep this drive alive and make the fumble recovery pay off, they need the 41.
Bashar has a man open, complete to Moore. Inside the 25, puts on the move, and he's down to the 18. Riddick finally finishes him off. And the things that they say about number 14 is that he may be the best that Syracuse has ever had, and that's saying a ton. Had his teeth knocked out in the Army game and came back at 25 stitches. Well, somebody blows the coverage here because he's just not supposed to be this open. There isn't anybody there. He's just breaking it off in a dead spot in his own. But this was a major dead spot. Reddick makes the tackle. He had 10 yards on either side of him. Three catches, 106 yards, 109 yards, I beg your pardon, and one touchdown tonight. the 10 it'll be close to the first down Michael Owen the ball carrier Ricardo McDonald Ricardo makes the McDonald. stop for the Panthers I don't know if they'll bring in the change or not but from where they have it spot spotted yes it is a first down that's 10 carries for 47 yards now for Owens first and goal for Syracuse the reverse Carpenter traffic in front cuts it inside and he will score Rob Carpenter carry for the Syracuse oh, you give this one to Rob Carpenter they defend pit defenses this play perfectly they're all out there they know what's coming now watch what he does. This guy weighs 180 pounds. He's supposed to go wide. He turns it upfield. 180 pounds, 6 2, right through the defense like a running back and plows into the end zone. That was just guts. That play was a busted play. Fisk up to attempt the extra point. Trying to make it a 10 point ball game. His kick is perfect. He is good. 70 seconds left in this third period. Rob Moore, 6'2", 201 pounds, a junior out of Hempstead, New York. And in case you didn't hear what we talked about in the first half, he has a vertical. They have measured him at 43 inches, and that's a guy that is very large for a receiver. ESPN's presentation of college football continues on Thursday night. That's when Division I AA power Idaho will play host to Big Sky rival Montana. Barry Tompkins and Gene Washington will be there for all the action. Starts at 8 p.m. And you'll get a chance to see a really fine quarterback in Idaho's All-American, John Freeze. That is this Thursday night at 8 o'clock. We've told you this is Eastern football. Rough and tough and most of the replays we give you are in a little bit of a slowed down version here it is in real time with matt sound show you how tough it is to get in the end zone Ooh, that was hat to hat <laughs> robert bradley number 16 is the man who came up and uh, put the hat on the man for the touchdown. He still got across. So it's a 30 to 20 ball game. Biscup will kick it off for Syracuse. Israel and DeVoe back deep for the Panthers. Israel deep for Pimp. Gonna be Israel at the 14. Tries to get outside the coverage and will be handcuffed at the 31 yard line. Jojo Wooden on the special teams to make the stop. Checking some other scores. Baylor out on top of Kansas in the second period. Now Southwestern Louisiana. Extends their lead over Rice. Florida State having their way. Bobby Bowden getting to look at a lot of folks tonight in East Carolina in a shutout right now. <laughs> Up the middle to the 40 yard line. Adam Walker, the senior out of Homestead, Pennsylvania, with a good run before Rob Thompson stops in, but it's a gain of nine. 
number 59, David Bavaro, linebacker. Watch his reaction here. He's going to step up. He gets a little too deep. He almost over-pursued the back from straight on. He got too close to Walker, and Walker was able to get around him. A lot of times as a linebacker, you want to sit on the line of scrimmage until the back commits because you have people on either side of you. He got away from that. Richards goes left side. I think he had the first down before he got pushed back. Navarro and Busey, the two inside linebackers, stepped up to fill the hole. Syracuse scoring drive, five plays, 51 yards, two minutes and 35 seconds. And Carpenter on the eight-yard run for the touchdown. Really shows what they can do with a little field position, Ron. They got they got that turnover and they were able to turn turn that into a touchdown right away. Happy to bring the chains from all the way across the field. And that's gonna be enough for the first down. Repeating the situation we had in the first half. We are not playing with the 25 second clocks on here at the stadium. The time is being kept on the field because of a malfunction of one of the clocks. What had happened is some of the numbers, some of the bulbs were not functioning properly. And Syracuse, Coach Mack claimed that it cost him a five-yard penalty because it appeared as though that there was 10 seconds left and the clock ran out, just as it has now. But that is the end of the third period. With the Pittsburgh Panthers leading the Syracuse Orangemen by 10 points. Let's take a break. We'll be back with the final 15 in just a moment. Fiber that's power. Kevin Kiley and Ron Franklin back in Pittsburgh, where the Panthers are leading by 10 over Syracuse. First play of the fourth quarter coming up. Richards. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage, and the first man to hit him was a Bavaro. Ran into his own blocker also, Chris Getz. Pittsburgh has gotten decidedly, uh, how should I say, conservative here in the uh, late uh, third quarter now and early in the fourth quarter. They've gone away from the pass on first down, trying to protect this lead, which has shrunk up a bit. I think they're going to have to get back to their game plan. See the back of big Mike Lavorio, 6'5, 270 pound freshman out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Van Pelt under pressure gets it away, and it is caught by Tooten at the 47 yard line of Syracuse. I really don't know what to tell you if you've been watching this game. It's a redshirt freshman. It's his third game. I'll let you show. I'll let him show you what he can do. That's remarkable. Two and six, 115 yards, one touchdown. But you can you can thank Van Pelt for that. The kid is incredibly accurate and what poise. I think what he also came over to say to Tootin was thanks for helping save my life. He came back came toward back, the line yeah. of scrimmage. Adam Walker crosses the 45, and Terry Wooden steps up into the hole to make the stop after a gain of three. Well, let's check the storyline of this one to date with a score in 30 to 20. Ben Pelt, numbers are simply unbelievable. Hit defense with six sacks for a minus 50. Lewis, Derek Lewis, three touchdown runs, and Syracuse rushing. You can take that top one and the bottom one, and that's going to spell victory just about any time for Pitt. This is an awesome number. Richards takes it inside the 40. He was 18 of 20 against Boston College. He was 10 of 11 in the second half for 122 yards. I thought I was saying to myself, well, he'll never do that again. Roman Matus, senior Roman out of Newark, New Jersey, is the shake-it-up player. So let's take a break. 
12 minutes, 41 seconds left to play in this one as they battle for supremacy in the East with the Panthers on top. We'll be right back. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Syracuse.